Here's a little secret. The best chip companies actually don't focus on gamers. They target developers. They make programming easier for them. Because what gamers really want is to play games smoothly without stuttering. And that requires collaboration and trust between chip designers and game developers. With that said, finally here's the NVIDIA versus AMD video I promised. Gaming Wars is officially back in rotation. Part 1. The GUI. Five years ago, AMD retired ATI a brand that pioneered computer graphics. So to properly tell the story of this rivalry, let's go back in time. So exactly how far should we go back in time? About 30 years. Sounds about right. Let's go to a time when computer graphics were just beginning to spark the imagination. This is it. Here we go. Charge! Three young entrepreneurs founded ATI to develop graphics controllers. And when a popular computer company became ATI's first big customer, the graphics industry was born. But computers at the time were limited to DOS-style terminals. It took another five years before graphics became a core part of the computing experience when Microsoft brought the graphical user interface to the mainstream. Microsoft makes software that makes computers work for you. And ATI was ready with the first card that could independently render 2D graphics. But let's face it, spreadsheets and databases are really boring in terms of graphics, so the industry needed something else to push it along. Part 2. 3D Games While Windows was taking over the business world, PC game developers were the real graphics innovators. They were the ones responsible for creating new markets for graphics hardware. And ever since, graphics cards and PC games have gone together like peanut butter and jelly. You need both of them to work together for a great experience, for immersion into a digital world. It was during this early frenzy that this AMD engineer saw the potential and formed his own startup. And his new company caught a big break when Sega ported its first full 3D fighting arcade to NVIDIA hardware. <laughs> Then legendary game developer John Carmack changed the world when he introduced this groundbreaking gaming engine. Quake was the first major 3D real-time rendering engine that spawned an entire generation of awesome games. Good morning, and welcome to the Black Mesa Transit System. This the Valley of the Jedi? Reborn. As a matter of fact, in pop culture, the idea of virtual reality was a running theme, even though the hardware wouldn't be ready for another 20 years. Let's play another game! Password, enter. But more importantly, a difficult transition in PC gaming was actually underway. You see, most game developers of the time preferred programming in DOS, the precursor to Windows, because it offered more direct connection to peripherals and had better performance. So with Windows 95, Microsoft released APIs targeting multimedia. However, creating these APIs was extremely complex. There were tons of peripherals and chipsets, and most people doubted DirectX could survive. But NVIDIA made the first of many good bets on the future of the graphics industry by supporting DirectX and Direct3D, an API that renders 3D graphics in Windows. And when the company followed up releasing the first 128-bit 3D processor, the company finally began making waves. But to truly win market share in a fast-changing industry, a tech company has to be first to market once in a while. And so a couple of years later, NVIDIA launched the GeForce 256, an entire generation ahead of its competition. Building on this success, NVIDIA introduced the first notebook GPU and was named the fastest growing company in the United States. After acquiring 3DFX, NVIDIA launched SLI, an algorithm that links together identical GPUs to produce a single output. And while most of NVIDIA's competition couldn't keep up, ATI kept pace. Building on top of Radeon, ATI launched Crossfire, its own dual GPU solution. 
But the graphics industry was about to shift again. Part three, from consoles to mobile. The early 2000s was really the decade of consoles. NVIDIA won the first Xbox, and ATI won the GameCube. When NVIDIA won the PS3, ATI supplied the Xbox 360 and the Nintendo Wii. But then Intel started paying more attention to graphics. And its competitor, AMD, started to worry. You see, AMD didn't really have a strong graphics team at the time. So after seeing Intel's plan to integrate graphics into its core processors, AMD made ATI an offer that it absolutely could not refuse. So while most tech companies focused on PCs and consoles, both Apple and Google were about to ignite the largest expansion in computing history, the mobile revolution. Hello. 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 Hi. How you doing there? Hello. Hello. And again, Nvidia saw the writing on the wall and quickly introduced its own mobile processor. And when Google ported Android to support the Tegra, NVIDIA became a player in the mobile market. And during all this massive growth, AMD stayed focused on the PC industry, introducing things like multi-display support, its APU, and a new developer platform that promoted parallel computing. Meanwhile, NVIDIA was thinking beyond PCs. It was trying to adapt to a world of mobile computing. And when Audi chose the Tegra to run its infotainment and navigation systems, NVIDIA proved it could adapt with the times. So what did AMD do in response? It remained content supplying the eighth generation of consoles. So let's see how all these changes in the technology industry bring us to today. Part four, NVIDIA versus AMD. First, AMD. According to recent earnings, AMD is in really bad shape. Intel took a lot of market share away in the PC industry and consoles really kept the company in business. But AMD is fighting the good fight. Its upcoming Carrizo release will unify its entire computing platform. Also, Linux is supporting AMD's 64-bit ARM and APU servers. And its recently announced FreeSync technology that reduces screen tearing is getting support from vendors. But its crown jewel has always been its long-term intellectual property license for Intel's x86 instruction set, the set of rules that tell PCs how to work. Unfortunately, x86 doesn't have as much developer support anymore, and because AMD doesn't control its own chip foundry, it's falling behind Intel in the race to introduce the latest and greatest chips. And the benefits of its heterogeneous systems architecture are still limited to industry and commercial applications. But its biggest weakness is failing to keep developers. All the excitement centers around hardware produced by Nvidia, Qualcomm, Apple, and Samsung, and they're getting all the more exciting applications. So AMD is cutting 700 jobs and is revamping its marketing and strategic direction under new leadership. But right now, NVIDIA is in full-on damage control with its core market, the customers that created the graphics industry, PC gamers. The GTX 970 launch was a huge success. NVIDIA published great specs, and review sites said things like the GTX 970 ties AMD's flagship GPU while consuming less power, making less noise, and at two-thirds the cost. It really was the best deal for the 2014 holiday season. But something just wasn't right. First thing I do whenever I get a new GPU is max out the resolution and turn up the anti-aliasing. Well, some new GTX 970 owners noticed some stuttering and frame rate drops. And it was even worse for dual-card SLI setups, NVIDIA's best customers. Turns out the original specs NVIDIA published were just plain wrong. Apparently the technical marketing team didn't know the engineers partially disabled some of the features, and four months later, NVIDIA corrected the mistake. And while the 970 is a great value, the damage is done. This makes life harder for game developers, and NVIDIA's core customer is definitely not happy. But NVIDIA is going really strong in mobile. Tegra is powering more and more cars, and NVIDIA is selling its own products, the Shield Portable and Shield Tablet. And the upcoming Tegra X1 will be twice as powerful as the K1. NVIDIA is hoping its new Driver PX platform will power new driver assistance systems that use 12 cameras to see and understand the environment in a future connected car architecture. This new car platform will enable things like collision detection and self-parking. And NVIDIA's Driver CX platform can control things like infotainment, navigation, and the instrument clusters. So all these technologies position NVIDIA to supply the connected car market all by itself. So comparing the two competitors, as a company, AMD is in a really bad spot. It's struggling to stay competitive in PCs, 
and outside of consoles, it's really lost a lot of developer support. In a way, it's unprepared for the post-PC world. Now, NVIDIA's made some really bad mistakes too, and while I do believe the 970 is a great value, NVIDIA is going to be much more scrutinized in the future. Trust is so hard to gain, yet so easy to lose, especially among gamers. But even though PowerVR, Apple, and Qualcomm are really getting a lot of developer support in the smartphone space, NVIDIA is showing that it can stay ahead and adapt in the evolving computer industry. The best companies know that they must cater to developers, with conferences like the Game Developers Conference, WWDC and Google I.O. If companies treat them well and gain their trust, developers will reward the platform with awesome software experiences. But the entire industry better get ready as graphics are about to take another leap in its evolution as VR moves from fantasy to reality. But we'll have to save that topic for the next episode of Gaming Wars. So thank you guys for watching this video as always, especially for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing of course. Really helps promote the channel to others and lets me know what's working, what's not. Um, finally glad to get this video out of the way, really excited about everything going on with graphics. I was thinking of the next video to focus on VR and where the state of the industry is with all of that. Um, or other topics that you guys would like me to cover. So definitely let me know below in the comments. And again, thank you for spending your time here on My Next Appliance, where we continue to explore how technology changes the world.